Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noding. In this episode, we're gonna continue on with the, our um, the concept that we learned earlier. It's just like a multiple when dealing with multiple time in SketchUp. So you might have seen something like this um, somewhere. Normally it's 2D, but now we're doing it in 3D and still kind of nice effects, um, especially if I flatten it like that. It's much simpler and clean. Yeah, you might have seen this uh, somewhere, but this is actually fairly simple. So this is just like, it's a sphere and the animations all happening in the transform, in the matrix. So just the locations and the scale. The location itself is actually from a circle, so we can control the, the radius of the circle. And we can increase or decrease the number of these uh, circles, or just call it maybe just call it bubbles that goes around. Um, it's actually what's happening here. The sphere is kind of growing up and down. So we have this kind of effects because of um, the combination of all these numbers. Sometimes uh, it's not easy to explain, but it's easier to just play around with this number. Sometimes, see, you, you get this two circle. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's um, let's start from scratch. So let's delete these. We don't need these files. Save as stretch of bubbles go around compositing stretch of new save and let's see start with a um, sphere and then a viewer draw so by default, the sphere has a lot of points. We don't need that many, maybe just 8 by 8 or 8 by 12 is rounder. And we don't need to see the point or the edges, just this is this is fine. Uh, we can control the radius if we need to. Actually, 8, eight by 8 should be fine. Now, the next thing we want to do is to kind of let's make a copy of this sphere um, in using circle. So circle and matrix in, of course, and circle has vertices positions that we can plug into this guy. How many is this? Uh, 24 by default. And we have 24 matrix here, 24 transform. So we have our sphere being copied along the circle. Okay, that's uh, pretty clear. This is, um, I'm not gonna animate the radius here. We can actually do it up there. But normally it's a good idea to, um, if it's just scaling the objects, we can do it using the matrix. And let's make it a uh, more um, modular because maybe at some point you want to change the sphere into another another objects, 3D objects. For so we're just gonna work using the transform. We can control the radius, the vertices, leave it at maybe make it 16 for now. Scale, rotations, angle. I think we just need to work with the scale. Okay scale, frame, I always um, kind of think a little bit backward. Here, let, let's say, okay, here we want to scale each and every sphere one by one and with the slight offset. Now I want to do it for all of them first, kind of testing it, okay. We know that it needs to grow, kind of like need to grow out, grow in. Like that. So for that, we need we can just use a uh, math and sign, of course. Again, sign is very useful. And if we plug in 
time frame into this guy we're gonna get really really fast motion so we always need to use math and use multiplier 0 0.1 maybe now we have sphere that's growing it's a pulsating sphere we can change the color this is just a few um, at this moment it's not particularly interesting okay with the color here actually Spreadshop doesn't have a color node yet but maybe soon pretty soon uh, <coughs> but we can actually play with color if we really want it we can control the color of this using animation nodes just for fun so it's a little bit of distractions object attribute output and just paste that into this guy bpy data node groups face color and plug in the color I wonder if this actually works Hmm, I'm just gonna use uh, maybe script node for this Paste that thing Input color items not four yeah not sure what I'm <laughs> I shouldn't have done that it's a uh, not so important but I just wanna change the color of this guy you know kind of maybe make it different color so it's more interesting to see frame plug into the hue and then nah. Okay, that seems to be working. Back to Spreadshop. Okay, so we have this sphere that's uh, kind of growing in and out and changing color as well, thanks to animation node. Separation. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, back to stretch up. Now, um, maybe we we can um, offset the the time now simply by using this addition and range float so let's say how many do we have now 16 16 instance of the sphere so count 16 
start stop of the offset number plug it in now we start to see this kind of pattern very quickly I will just uh, <coughs> excuse me use an integer number here make it a uh, 20 maybe just plug to the count and to the vertices it might be a little bit slow because of uh, animation nodes at the moment if I switch this off okay a little bit faster okay so you can increase and decrease the number of sphere okay we start to get something that looks quite nice um, we can make it a little bit faster but you can see the effects it looks as if the, the bubble is kind of rotating around where they're really just growing um, kind of scaling up and scaling down let's see what else we can do here what's interest uh, what's interesting here is uh, if I actually use map range so with all this value up to the sign we know that the sine wave is gonna give the value between minus one and one by using the map range we can control this number a little bit better like uh, Let's see. You see here, because there's a clamping, because we are clamping the value based on this alt min and max, we can have um, kind of we kind of a uh, um, splitting the value uh, the value oh, here here. Uh, let me draw it. This is a sine wave going up and down. If we are clamping the value, alt min and max, like uh, between 0 and 1, we are just going to be using the top value. The one at the bottom will be kind of hidden. That's why we have this kind of effects, which is uh, quite interesting. Um, So you have control over the minimum and maximum value of the sphere instead of zero. Sometimes you do want it zero. And the start and stop, this also control how many of the kind of like this bubble sphere you want. See, this one gives you three. You can have only one, for example. So like this, see you don't, this is something that you, you don't plan, but you don't, you get the result, interesting result. See this one give you two, and at this point you can turn on the coloring again. I don't know. I think it's weird that uh, it's slowing down when at this. Uh, if I change the layout to full screen, it's actually pretty fast. Spread job. Let's see what else we can do here. Actually, there we can do a lot here. Like the sphere itself doesn't need to be sphere. It can be any any objects, and that objects can be spinning as well and whatnot. Uh, 
uh, maybe increase the number of bubbles. Hmm. Perhaps we can also play with the old min and max value. Whoops. If we go all the way, like uh, to minus one, we get the full circle. Oh, maybe we have too many bubbles at the moment. Make it 48. Okay, that's a little bit nicer. Maybe we can make this a little bit faster. Yeah, I guess that's pretty interesting. I mean, if it's not a sphere, maybe it's like a like a donut, torus. Oh, we don't have torus here. Oh, that's okay. Uh, we can use um our own ring actually we can just use a circle and maybe a pipe this. That guy. maybe this vector in Oh, we don't need to control the size. I guess this is quite all right. Mm. Circle size of three, maybe it's triangle. Oh wait, the size actually controls the radius. The I think polyline viewer kind of does it as well. Although this guy doesn't have object output here. Don't worry. little bit more interesting but we know that we can also do like uh, rotations let's see if we can improve this further rotations maybe rotate it in the z-axis z-axis and the angle can can be from the time frame so this time frame coming in, we don't need the sign, we can just plug this guy in. Math. Maybe um use math, plug this multiple value and then use multiplier. And rotate it with a 30 degree rotation for each one of them. Maybe it's slightly more in interesting. Maybe scale the triangles. Now it's starting to look uh, original. <laughs> I don't know. This uh, sometimes complex thing. You get a result that's uh, okay. I didn't mean to make this, but It's interesting the the pipe doesn't actually close itself. 
wonder why. Maybe I need to use a UFI connection. Vertices, vertices, and data pages. Hmm, weird. Maybe there's a bug. Four. Oh, just now I just I click on free direction and it's, it's frozen. I like it smaller like that. Well, I guess we can kind of continue adding stuff, like layering stuff, maybe like even rotating this guy in different angle. I haven't tried to kind of piggyback the matrix here, like the, if I want to do the rotation, this one rotates in the Z, but what if I want to rotate more? Maybe matrix deform kind of does it. Matrix deform probably will rotate the whole thing. Maybe I need to use a matrix list and. Hmm. I'm pretty sure this will rotate the whole thing. Oh, actually, no. This one does still respect the previous uh, matrices. So if I if I plug this guy in, put that in. We have that kind of effects. I'm pretty sure I've done something similar in the past, but not quite the same. This one is using circle. Maybe we should just go back to the bubbles. Just use the edges. No, it doesn't work if it's the edges. Yep. I guess we can leave it there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, it for this live noting video. It's just a reusing of the the concept we learned in the previous live noting video. So multiple numbers you can pipe into anywhere. You can scale it or you can rotate it. In this case, um, 
we primarily using sine wave for the for the scaling and it, it gives a nice effect I think working with sine with um, it's always uh, it's fun to work with it's fairly simple but it's always giving a nice result for motion graphics so if you have any question feedback comments you can leave it down below thanks again for tuning in I'll see you in the next video